Hello and welcome back to a different video today. It's a bit more of a podcast, it's a very long video, but actually just finishing editing, I'll just stick this in at the end. This is for those who want to take content creation seriously. These are a bunch of things I've learned so far, I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot more too. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions, any concerns, whatever, I'm always free to talk. I'm going to put some timestamps down below too, and I'll catch you all soon. Before we get started into this, what I would say is, is that the intent of this stream, and I'll make it a video most likely, is to try and help someone. It's to try and provide maybe a different mindset, a different approach. Maybe you learn something, maybe you're educated on something you didn't know. Maybe you're stuck in limbo and it helped with a little bit of clarity. I would like this to be a benefit to people. On top of that, what I will also say is, is am I qualified to do this conversation? Absolutely fucking not, I'll be straight up with you, I am not qualified for this conversation. Uh, you know, I am nowhere near good enough at this to be telling anyone how to do something, what they should be doing, anything like that. But I do feel like what I'm about to talk about, in my heart of hearts, as of today, right now, at 8 minutes past 5, on the 4th of October 2021, I believe right here, right now, this is the best things you can be doing. Now, if I'm presented with new information, might this opinion change? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, I'm not saying do this and only do this or whatever. This is just my mindset, my thoughts, my opinions. If that's different, then things have to get personal. It's just different. When I say this, a part of it is to do with, I believe in myself and even though the odds are stacked against me, I do believe in myself. And you have to back up your bullshit. Do you guys know Eddie Hall, ex world Strongest Man, that's his catchphrase, back up your bullshit. And what he means by this is that one day he had to tell himself, I'm going to be world Strongest Man. And you have to believe it. You have to believe it more than anyone else. I'm playing to myself here. You, motherfucker, right there in the camera. <laughs> You have to believe this more than anyone else because if you don't believe in yourself, no one else will and that is just a fact. Because I am not where I believe I can be, it is totally fair for someone to come into my stream right now and say, you should not be doing this sort of talk, this sort of conversation. That is fair enough, honestly. I accept that. But the reason why I say that is because I believe in myself and I back myself and I believe that my ceiling is way higher than where I am currently in regards to the numbers, the followers, the subs, the money and earning, top to bottom. That is just how I feel, how I believe in myself as of right now today. And like I said, the aim of this is just to uh, try and help somebody. If this helps one of the people in the Slack community or helps a random person that somehow stumbles across this stream, VOD, whatever, nice. And just before we get into the nitty gritty, into the little details, what I will say is this is a talk and a conversation for people that want to take content creation seriously. If you like to just jump on Xbox at the end of the day, stream to people, your friends, whoever, that is fucking cool. But this is not for you. This is a conversation about people that want to grow that want to do this series, that want to earn some peas, baby. That's what we're here for. You know, it, it might sound a bit um, cynical, is that the word I'm looking for? When you'd say, you're doing it for peas. You are. If you if you tell me you want to do this for a living, your focus is peas. It's that simple. Okay, so currently, I stream on Twitch. Twitch.tv Matt underscore WZ doesn't stand for Warzone. Let's not do that. As of today, you know what? If you're watching this live, if you're watching it in the past, in the future, if you're watching this in the future, have a guess at how many people stream right now on Twitch as of the 4th of October. How many different unique streamers is there? Let's Google it. Come with me. Let's go to Google. How many 
different people stream on Twitch. The number of active streamers on Twitch worldwide from January 2018 to the September 2021. Number of streamers in the million. So there's 8.07 million active streamers. In September, Twitch had approximately 8.07 active streamers, down from a peak of 9.89 million in January earlier the year. Twitch is a streaming platform that is very popular with gamers and gaming audience. The most popular Twitch channels have millions of viewers. Ninja, the top ranked streamer on Twitch, had 16.6 .6 million followers in April 2021. If you want to do this for a job, if you want to do this for a living, if you want to get the peas, the paycheck, the monies, you'd have to at least be partner. So out of the 9 million people that are active, let's go to Google again. So number of Twitch partners, 20, there you go. Alright, this one says 51,000. Actually, I'm just going to round it up to 60. I'm just going to round it up to 60. Divided by 60k. So that's 60. 1, 2, 3. 134. So it's a less than 1% chance. To be a partner, you have to average 75 viewers. That probably isn't even close to a livable working wage. So out of that... Out of that less than 1%, there's then an, another percentage of those people who are actually earning full-time money revenue. Just to put into perspective how fucking tough it is to do this. There's a sort of rule of thumb that is like a, a 1,000 true fans. It doesn't necessarily mean you average 1,000 views. If you need to have 1,000 true fans that would be willing to pay you a hundred dollars a year for your entertainment, for your services, videos, streams, all this good stuff. If a thousand people paid you a hundred dollars, that would mean your revenue would be a hundred K. Now, if you're a partner, you might have some form of agreement, but you probably take half of that from Twitch. Twitch takes the other half, so that's 50K. Then there's taxes and there's other bullshit that goes into it. That's an even further percentage. And then you have to convert that to pounds you're probably therefore at a workable living wage. So you need a thousand true fans. Um, which is, honestly, a lot of fucking people. When people start off doing this, they want to be like the Nick Smirks of the world, they want to be like the Ludwig, Ludwigs of the world, where you're on like 20k up to fucking 100k viewers, which is just ridiculous. That's mind-blowing. That's like the top 0.001% of people. Averaging like a thousand true fans, that's where the aim is, if you're able to do this as a full-time career. Now, if I was to go back to talking about believing yourself and backing up your bullshit and the Eddie Hall conversation, what I would say is, if you're making content, do you like your content? Can you watch your streams back? Would you show a video you've made to your mum or your dad or a sibling or a friend? If your answer is no, maybe you need to do something. What I would say is that as a small content creator, and this is a mistake I've made, I'll put my hands up to this. You should value the growth of your brand and your content over finances. Now, what I mean by this is, is that when you sign up to a Twitch affiliate, it's a good feeling because you need to, you're not really that understanding of the whole picture. But you start thinking to yourself, I can start earning money now, which is a, it's a nice thought. You know, who doesn't want to earn money? Full stop. But it's not necessarily the best thing for your brand because when you sign that affiliate contract, you are locked down. You can only stream on Twitch. Well, with a little asterisk. The asterisk being you can stream on other platforms, but not at the same time. Now, uh, what I would suggest is, and I've, I'm considering doing this myself, I'll explain later why I'm not. If I was you, and you were serious about growing your brand, I would cancel your Twitch affiliate 
contract ASAP. And I would pay for the Streamlabs Prime feature, which means you can multi-stream, restream, whatever it's called, where you can stream to Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook all at the same time. That growth is way more important to brands than earning the finances. It took me six months to earn my first $100 from Twitch. $100 over the course of six months is not worth the potential growth I could have had from restreaming on different platforms too. And the thing is, is that it's not like it's three times the potential because you've got Twitch discoverability, YouTube discoverability, and Facebook gaming discoverability. YouTube and Facebook are notoriously better at discoverability than what Twitch is. So your growth isn't necessarily three times, it could be like up to six times, up to ten times. Those algorithms are so much better at finding the right consumer for your content than Twitch will ever be. And the more I learn about Twitch, the more there's things about it that I like. I'm not going to say sit here and say I hate Twitch because that's not true, I love Twitch. But there are flaws with Twitch. And this is something that, as I've taken content a bit more seriously, I'm starting to understand them. It's shedding the light on the bad sides, the bad aspects of Twitch. For example, VODs stands for Video On Demand. First of all, who the hell watches your VODs? There's no nothing to direct people to your VODs. Same with clips. Second of all, if you're an affiliate, you only get to keep your VOD for 14 days for two weeks. And if you're a partner, which is even more shocking, it's only up to 60 days for like two months. Could you imagine if you put a video on YouTube or you put out a tweet on Twitter and after two weeks, two months, it got deleted forever. Could you imagine how stupid that is? Could you imagine, just think about how ridiculous this is. You sign a contract with them. And they're like, yeah, you can only keep stuff for two weeks. But we know which keeps these VODs privately anyway. So why not have it up on the, on the um, channel, on the page? And we know they keep it because if you remember a couple of years ago, maybe last year, the year before, they had the DMCA scandal where they basically heavily recommended to everyone that they delete their streams, VODs, clips because of the new DMCA rules and stuff. So they had it. Let's talk about ads. Let me go on my Twitch. I'm not allowed to show you this, but I'm just going to do it and you can watch my face as I do it. You're very welcome. I've earned 24 cents from ads. <laughs> now, this is another thing when it comes to growth versus finances. Ads fucking suck. Okay? What I'd heavily advise you to do right now if you're the Twitch affiliate, is reduce the amount of ads you can show in your stream. So for me, what I've done is, the first ad starts at 30 minutes in, and the last 30 seconds, and they happen once an hour. This is the minimum, this is the fewest amount of advertisements you can get on your stream, and I advise everyone to get as few advertisements on their stream as possible. If you make next to no, no money off it, it's not worth it. And I want you to guess right now, if for every 10 people that click on your stream, how many walk out with a scene ad? How many? I know the numbers. Have a guess. Okay, so the number is 3 in 10, so it's not as high as Dill. But I think we could all guess, we could all look at ourselves, sorry, and say, an ad's come up and we've clicked off something. I think we've all done that at some stage during our time. So yeah, the, the ads are not worth it whatsoever. It's a shame you can't turn them off, if I'm being perfectly honest. I was going to start a concept about where should you post your content. You should post your content on every single fucking platform you can. If you want to grow on Twitch, you have to spend less time on Twitch. I know it's fucking backwards. It makes no sense, but this is what you have to do. You have to post on TikTok. You have to post on YouTube. You have to post on Instagram Reels. Fucking post a video on Twitter. I'm pretty sure on Twitter, you'd get more reach with a fucking clip than you would on Twitch. Alright, let's say I like to play COD. Let's say I like to Warzone, which my name might suggest. We'll see. Come with me. Okay, we're on Twitch. Let's go on games. And... 
Where's Warzone? There he is. So I have a five viewer Andy. Okay, I average five views. Let's go. Normally it doesn't start on recommended. This is a new feature. We'll talk about this later on. But typically it's done it from high to low. So if I were if I were a five viewer Andy, and which I am, and people were to try and discover my thing naturally, authentically. This is how Twitch used to show it. They've done the recommended thing recently, to be fair. Let's try and find someone with five views. Now let's look at how many different streams I'm having to scroll past to get to where my stream will lie in this. We're at 30 viewers now. We're at 20 viewers now. 16, 15, we're almost there, we're almost at my stream. My stream's almost here. It's exciting, this guy's, isn't it? Jesus Christ, my computer is struggling here. What's going on? Come on. We're at nine viewers, we're in single, single digits now. Single digits. Almost there. Five year Randy, come on, where are we? We're almost there. Let's keep it moving. Five, we're on a lot of sixes. <laughs> a lot of sixes, what's going on? Five, here we go. Oh my God, we got to the five year Randys. Let's go. If you are a consumer Twitch, you're just a nice viewer. Who in their right fucking mind is gonna do what I've just done there? We've had to scroll past so many different options you to get to my stream just by chance authentically it's just not going to happen is it it's just not going to happen this is why we need other platforms youtube tiktok twitter instagram all these things linkedin indeed i'm getting a bit off the course here aren't I? but this is the point it's stupid it's a backwards concept which should do better to promote the right streams to the right people but you need to spend less time on Twitch and more time on making content for other platforms. Each brand, each company that is successful has an R&D section. What this stands for is research and development and I would implore you to do the same sort of thing. Every time you stream, every time you make a video, you need to do something that's gonna better it from what you've done before because ultimately, if you want to do this as a living, you have to be a top certain percentage. <coughs> Pardon me. If you want to overtake the majority of the users on Twitch, you have to do something better than what all they do. Or than what do. So research and development. It could be the style of content you want to make. You could be researching how to edit your videos better. And editing is really important to keep your audience engaged. You can research and develop these things. It could be your role within the community. It could be amazing graphics. Watch other people make graphics. Take ideas from them. These things are important to make yourself better. So one way you can grow is through collaborations. Now this is something that I personally do struggle with. I'll be open and clear about that. And if you want to do a collab with someone bigger than yourself in terms of numbers, you have to provide value to them in some way because if you're not making their content better then why would they be interested in streaming with you in making content with you you have to find a way where you are valuable to them for them to want to listen and i don't know what my value is just as of yet i'll be honest that is something you have to figure out if you was interested in going through collabs and stuff Let's talk about the next thing. The next thing is big events. Now, I'm not trying to call anyone out here when I start, start talking about this, but I know that a lot of content creators that I know just jump on, play a game, hope they get a clip, hope they get a good game. Let's just say it's a Wars on the stream. Hope they get a fucking quad collateral, the sniper, that's a clip for TikTok. Hope they get a 20 kill game on Reef Birth, that's a video for YouTube. It's too reliant on the gameplay. And what you should do instead is 
plan your streams around the video this way you're going to get something out of it no matter what and what i would say on top of this is promote it promote your stream promote the event that you're doing make the big event this is what i'm trying to do at the moment with the pokemon series for example I genuinely think that'll be something that's good for my channel. I did, the, I did the promotion. I put it on YouTube, but I got a subscriber from it. I struggled to get su subs on YouTube. It's my thirty-first one. I've done this for like four months on YouTube now. Getting one sub right now is a big deal, and that was easy for me to do. Um, so promote it. Could you imagine? Let's think about it in a different way. Could you imagine? You're hosting a house party. You're there on your own. And you sat on the couch, music blasting, lights going fucking mental, and you're thinking to yourself, why is no one turning up to my party? My party is amazing. It's because you didn't fucking invite anyone. You didn't tell anyone you was having a party. You're hoping a random person comes to your house, walks in it, and enjoys the party. It just doesn't happen like that. It comes across a storm talking nonsense, and that's the mentality you have to have when you're making your streams. It's it is fucking nonsense to just turn on the stream, put press, go live and OBS and hope people turn up. It's a ridiculous mentality, but because you don't sort of initially view it the same way when you start streaming, I can understand why people do it. And I've done it for the longest time. I've been the most open critic of myself, open critic of myself that there is. It's, it's so stupid when you frame it that way, but it is. And linked in with that, I'll say is, Unless your stream is a recording for a video, why would you stream to zero viewers? What benefit are you getting out of that? None. You'd be better off with that time spending it on making content for other platforms because streaming to zero people is absolutely useless for your stream. Absolutely useless. That's obviously something for people who are considering starting up and newer. A big event could be something like a subathon. Promote it, plan it ahead of time. Don't just like do it on the day. Don't promote it on the day. Get build some excitement around it. Get people interested. Ask yourself this: Who is your target audience? And if you said everyone, I want you to slap yourself in the face for right now. That is a ridiculous answer because Barbara, who's seventy years old, is going to go and enjoy the same content as Max, who's fifteen. You have to think about who your target audience is. But not also that. What content would they enjoy? How old is this person who watches your stream? What gender are they? What are they interested in? What platforms do they use? Which platform do they use the most? How long do they spend on these platforms? What are their worries? What are their concerns? What are they interested in? How could you relate to this person? You know, I often make jokes that are self-deprecated about never um, getting a woman, failing to attack women, whatever. Because I want to relate to fucking losers who are younger than me. Yeah? <laughs> but you get my point, don't you? you know, when you were a, a young man, these are the worries and concerns that you have, and I would relate to that because that is also who I am. Definitely. So it's, it's not as though I'm actually fucking successful with women, is it? Come on, let's be real. But, you know, it's just an exaggerated part of me that would help me relate to my target audience, which is young males. What I would say is, if you haven't thought about your target audience, I would suggest you do it as soon as possible. Write it down on a piece of paper. Write down the first thing that they think about in their day. It might sound stupid, it might sound so detailed to the point it's irrelevant, but you can understand them put yourself in their shoes and then in turn that should help you create the content that you think they would want to watch so let's move on to a more recent controversy which is the new boosting feature let me see if i can find a picture for you let's talk over it first and i'll explain what it is for those that don't know so help this person get discovered boost recommends their stream to new viewers to help grow their community and you can buy a thousand recommendations for a dollar or three thousand recommendations for three dollars um so this is going to be something that'll be for a viewer to purchase to help the streamer 
There's a couple of things as to why this is absolutely dog shit. It is dog shit, and I'll explain right now. The first thing is, is that Twitch gets all of the money. Okay, if you want to support streamers, pay them. You would pay for a Netflix subscription, wouldn't you? Pay the streamer. If you want to support the streamer, pay them. Gifted sub, donation, bits. I mean, bits aren't great, but the point is the point, right? Twitch gets 100% of this revenue. At least the streamer gets something if he gifts subs, subscribe, donate, use bits. Second reason why it's bad is, is why is a viewer concerned with the growth of the stream? They're there for the entertainment and for the content. It's not their concern with how well the, the streamer is growing. It just isn't. Third of all, a recommendation means jack shit and the phrasing is intentional and with purpose. A recommendation is an impression, not an engagement. And those two words are very different. Okay. Let me show you. Let's go to the homepage. Okay. Let's say someone has boosted Melanin Gamers stream. This is a recommendation right here. This is an impression. I've got it muted. I'm not even really watching it. This is a promoted stream. This is a recommendation right here. Am I going to click this person's stream? Fuck no. I don't even like Valorant. I don't even like Valorant. Never watched anyone play Valorant. It could be one of these on the screen here on the left hand side too. How small is your recommendation? I have no incentive to click any of these guys' things. It just says GM Hikari is playing chess. I mean, I know who he is. He's a big streamer. Chess 24 GM chess. Why would I click this person's stream? I have. I like chess, but this tells me nothing about the person to the point where I'd want to click on their stream. Another reason why it's bad is because I watch a lot of Warzone content. No, it's not because I like the game. In fact, I've made it pretty public that I don't like the game. Let's go, let's go big screen again. It's public information. I don't like the game anymore. I watch Warzone streamers because they're my friends and the other streamers that I want to support. But now my, the, the Twitch algorithm is going to think, this Matt WZ guy likes watching Warzone content. Let me recommend this person to him. I'm not going to click because I don't know who they are. It's not why I watch the content. Um, an engagement is where someone actually clicks on the screen. So I reckon you'd have less than 1% ratio of impression to engagement ratio. So for every 1,000 impressions and recommendations you get, you might get 10 clicks if you're lucky. You, you might get 10 clicks onto your stream if you're lucky. And if you've got ads on three, you're going to fuck off anyway. Another reason why it's dog shit is because I'm a five viewer Andy. If five people boost my stream, that's all well and good. But someone with 500 viewers might have 500 people boosting their stream. Who's stream is going to get shown to more people? The person with more viewers. This is exactly the same issue. Doesn't solve anything. The people at the top stay at the top. The onus of discoverability isn't on the viewers, it's on Twitch. You are making viewers pay for Twitch to do their job. Twitch should, Twitch's discoverability should be top notch anyway. I should be recommended to people who are going to like my streams with, with this feature or without this feature. It's on, it's on Twitch to make it to do the best for the, the viewers, for the streamers, not for the viewers. What do you need to do if things aren't going right for you is to look at yourself. I'm sick to death of people blaming external factors. This platform shit, that platform shit, my content's good, why are people not seeing it? Stop blaming everything else around you and look at yourself and look at the things that you're doing. Can you do better? The answer is yeah, we could all do better. I could do better. Fucking hell, if I look at my content from six months ago, I think it's shite. It wouldn't surprise me if I look at my content today in six months time and look back at this video and think well, That was shit, I could have done better there It's just the way it is, it's just the natural progression It's, it's the mindset that you have to have If you have an idea for a stream 
promote the stream, make content from the stream, and you don't get the numbers that you want from it, you need to look up why that might be. Maybe the idea was bad. Maybe the edit was shit. Maybe you didn't promote it enough. And the thing is, it's tough to be self-critical when you're making content because you, you, you put everything into it that you've got. At least I hope you do. And when you put everything into it that you've got and then someone goes, this like, I'm not going to view that. This is rubbish. It fucking sucks. It hurts like a bitch. But you've got to get over it. You have to take it on. You have to be confident with these things. You, you, you have to be humbled by it sometimes. I'm sat here today willing to accept that I probably wasted a lot of my content creation time so far making content that is absolutely dog shit. I'm, I'm sorry, willing to say that. You have to be your own biggest critic. And you have to surround yourself with the right sort of people too. If you do a video that is dog shit, you have to surround yourself with people that will tell you that the video is dog shit also. Now, there is good ways of framing it. There is constructive criticism. It will hurt. I'd be there. People have told me that my videos aren't good for a certain reason or that I could improve a certain aspect. It's absolutely fine. Doesn't mean it doesn't hurt, but it means you should learn from it also. It's just the way it is. The thing is, I'm a personal trainer and more often than I'd like to see happens is where people will make barriers for themselves. People will put something that is made up that is a nothing reason, that's absolute nonsense. They'll put this thing in front of them and say, this is the reason why I can't achieve my goals. And it's just bollocks. A lot of people do this. I think it's some human nature bullshit, but you'll create reasons for yourself as to why you can't achieve what you want to achieve. And it's just bollocks. It's the wrong mindset to have. You need to surround yourself with the people that'll tell you that you're doing this shit. So stop making excuses fucking start doing don't be the fucking content creator that has all the good ideas but never fucking implements it don't be that guy it's not gonna get you anywhere oh yeah what i was gonna say is just to be <laughs> just to be a bit nicer about this is no one is good at anything that they do the first time to do it and to be honest a lot of us who are going to be watching this video are small content creators which means we're probably new to it there's going to be a bunch of mistakes along the way. I've been personal training for like three years. My first year, I've made so many mistakes. So many mistakes. It's outrageous when I think about it now. But you have to go through some shit to get good at the end of it. Uh, no one is good at anything to do for the first time. You probably have to do something a hundred times to get decent at it. Even if it's a bad idea or you think it won't do well, just do it and see what happens exactly. Um... And this is a little bit where the Twitch versus YouTube conversation comes in. I could have an idea for a stream, do all the right things beforehand, stream it, and the stream will do bad numbers. I could make a video out of it, and the video does really well. It doesn't mean it's a bad idea, it just means for some external reasons, people didn't come to the stream, but the idea was good, the execution was good, the edit was good, the video proves it was a good idea. If you do something, and you don't do well from it, and you keep doing the same thing, keeps making the same mistakes, it's not going to help you, bro. Bro, what's that quote? Like the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again without changing, right? Let's say, for example, you're someone who doesn't have much time. Let's say you can only commit ten hours a week to making content. Being time efficient would be extremely important to you so how can you be time efficient well you need to triple up on your content basically so your streams are your recording sessions you then edit your streams down into videos and individual small segments from those videos then then become shorts that you post on platforms too you could spend five hours on the stream three hours on the video two hours on the two hours on the shorts as an example i know it's easier said than done it's the same, basically, it's the same content three times in three different formats on a bunch of different platforms. Stop, and I beg you, don't do this. When you're on your Xbox, press record that, save the video on your phone, and then upload it to TikTok. And then don't do anything else with it. 
because I swear to God that I have seen people get double kills on Apex all the time, triple kills on Warzone all the time, a fucking goal on Rocket League scored all the time, whatever. No one cares. People have seen this a million times already. You have to think about the value that your content brings to people. Why should they watch your content again? Why should they be bothered about future content that you're posting? You have to leave the viewer, the content consumer, walking away thinking about your content. They have to feel something. You have to have either provided something educational to them or have made them laugh or have made them feel sad or cry. It's not, a, it's not a bad thing to make people feel this way, it's good. But you have to leave an impression. And one thing that I think ties in very well with emotion is the choice of music that you use in your videos. Um, I think this is massively underrated. The one who's an anomaly within the content creation world is someone called Ludwig. I'm assuming we've all heard of him. His growth rate was like over a thousand percent. It's ridiculous. He, in a very short amount of time, went from the bottom to the top. And one thing that I think he does extremely well is his choice of music. He knows how to use music to convey a certain mood. And I think that's something that's heavily underrated. And the last thing I would say on this topic is, does your content stand the test of time? Can I watch a video a year from now and still enjoy it? Right now, I feel like I'm making YouTube videos that I'll watch in a year's time and I'll still think I really enjoy them. I'm not trying to be egotistical. I'm just proud of what I've done. Does the content you're putting out right now stand the test of time? Okay, the next thing I would say is, you need to surround yourself with the right people who are equally as ambitious or want to make the same type of content as you. So I do think it's a good idea for you to surround yourself with the right types of people who are equally as ambitious, want to make the same type of content, and who will tell you what you need to hear at the right time. Being surrounded by the same type of people is good because you can bounce ideas off each other. If I pitch an idea to someone, they say it might not be good because of X, Y, Z. They might say it's really good. When should we start implementing that idea? What's the best? How can we squeeze the most out of this idea? Um, but also, it has to be people you like. You have to get on with these people because your content needs to be authentic. At the end of the day, all people want to watch is other friends having a good time. I don't think it's that complicated, really. Um, the, your relationship has to be genuine and it has to be authentic. An elevated pitch. Now, this is one that I suck at. I suck penis at this. I'm awful at it. But this is what is called your elevator pitch. Now, for those of you that don't know, an elevator pitch is you are a small fry. You're an intern at a big boy corporation. And you get into an elevator and it's a big Donny CEO stood next to you. You've got 30 seconds with this person. How could you sell yourself to this person while should the elevator together? It's a short little pitch. If, say for example, I wanted to join a gaming organization and the CEO of the organization came into my room right now and said, 30 seconds, show me what you've got. How could you provide value to me? Right now, I would suck at that, I'll be honest with you. But it's important to have because you, these opportunities can just come up like that and you need to be prepared for it. If you're going, <laughs> turned off straight away. I'm going to go through three content creators now and I'll sh who inspired me and I'll tell you why. First one, who I've mentioned probably a lot throughout this, is Ludwig, who coincidentally did a talk on the boosting thing recently too. He does daily content, his form of your streams every recordings, then you edit it. He's obviously an anomaly in the modern area about growth and stuff. I think his, uh, what, what did the notes have put? The way he treats his audience conveys his message. Yeah, he's very good at getting people engaged. And he's very good at talking, which helps him, obviously. The next person I want to talk about is Smallan. Now, he does videos less often, but his ideas are very unique with the treated as big events. So he's a higher quality, lower quantity type of person. Um, and again, he's an anomaly. He's, I, I keep attempting to, <laughs> to say a word I can't say. Um, let's go to one videos. He doesn't, he doesn't um, upload very often. I think he edits his own videos still. But as you can see, his videos are few and far between. 
but the number's too great. <laughs> okay, and the third person I'd like to talk about is someone called um, Devin Nash. The last person I'd like to talk about is Devin Nash. Now, I found Devin Nash because of the fact that Ludwig did an interview with him. He's a CEO of an agency that works with content creators, I believe. But his insights and perspective is totally unique and is so worth checking out. Uh, this this video did about viewpoint and stuff like that is very interesting. Uh, it's very educational and this is where I learned a lot of the things that I've known today. Um, so he's definitely worth checking out. He's very informative, very wise. Check him out, 100%. The thing is, is for me personally, I'm always fucking switched on. I find it hard to relax, I'll be honest with you. I feel immense guilt whenever I'm not doing something that contributes towards my content creation business. I'll be honest, it's not a good thing, it's a fucking curse, trust me. Alright, it's not good. But one thing that helps is watching these videos, and I'll show you now. Um, so basically, I've got a notepad, and I'll write down things from these videos so i'm sat there I'm just relaxing taking in the content but i'm taking notes and i'm learning at the same time so i feel like it's a good um happy medium if you also sort of struggle with not being able to relax your stuff um, so if i just bring you back to devin's page sorry so he did a, he did something here seven success secrets to become a top one percent streamer well i have written these seven things down for example like i was relaxed and stuff i was enjoying it but i felt like i was learning i'm, I'm contributing towards my my brand at the same time but writing down things that i feel like are worth knowing and there we go that my friends is the end do we have any questions 